Hi, again, after reviewing the first two chapters, we can move on to the third chapter, which is about the stock markets. So what's a stock? Uh, a stock is a is a financial security uh, similar to bonds, but it's uh, in a bit different because uh, it provides equity financing. So by issuing stocks, shares of stock, companies can provide equity financing and they can raise capital. Issuing stock provides permanent financing, so there is no maturity, unlike bonds. And companies do not have to make regular payments, as in the case of bonds, in in, uh, in the form of uh, dividend payments, uh, in the form of uh, interest pay payments or coupon payments. Uh, stocks do not offer regular payments. In fact, stock represents a share in the ownership of the company. So by uh, buying stocks, by investing in stocks, uh, investors become uh, owners of the company. Uh, stock investments provide uh, two types of return, namely, uh, they are dividend gain and capital gain. Uh, as you may remember, capital gain uh, stems from the price appreciation, whereas dividend gain uh, can be uh, can arise be uh, as uh, companies make profits. They may decide to distribute some of their profits in the pro in the form of in the form of dividends to their uh, stockholders or shareholders. Uh, there are some rights and liabilities of stockholders. Uh, so as we mentioned, uh, they can receive dividends. So there's the right to do, to receive dividend. Right to preemption, uh, which, uh, which are preemption rights represent uh, priority uh, of purchasing stocks when there is a new issue uh, to the existing stockholders. Uh, and the right to liquidation surplus, uh, in fact, uh, is uh, when companies go bankrupt, um, uh, the first, uh, uh, first the creditors uh, receive their uh, rights, and then, uh, and then the stockholders. So what is left after the creditors are paid uh, are the rights of the stockholders as uh, the liquidation surplus. And uh, as uh, investors become uh, owners when they uh, invest in stocks, they have the right to vote uh, in the annual meeting and the right to participate in the management of companies. Uh, and another right is the right to demand information regarding uh, the profitability of the company, the performance date. So they want to assess the performance of the company so they can uh, they can analyze the financial information. They can analyze the financial statements of the company and they want to be informed about the operations of the company. And they, has, they have some uh, liabilities, which are uh, secrecy liability and capital liability. So they are liable to, uh, their liability in terms of capital is limited with the uh, amount of the capital they invest in the company. Uh, there are some different stock value uh, definitions. Uh, the intrinsic value we have, in fact, we have mentioned intrinsic value uh, a few times. The, in the intrinsic value is the real value or the economic value of a security. And similarly, the intrinsic value of a stock is the discounted cash flows that the investor expects to receive in the future. Uh, the present value of the future cash flows, in other words. The, co go the going concern value is the value that results from the company's operations, assets, customers, and workforce. So it reflects the value of these uh, assets of the company, including customers and workforce. The par value, uh, remember, or the nominal value, refers to the minimum amount of money that the stockholders have to pay per share. So it is the nominal value. The book value of a stock is the accounting value reflected in the financial statements. In fact, the shareholders' equity uh, represents the value of the uh, stockholders. Uh, and therefore, we refer to the, this as the book value of shareholders' equity. So if we divide this by the number of shares outstanding, we can uh, easily compute the book value of a share of stock. Liquidation value is the value that remains after all the assets of the company are sold and the liabilities are paid off. As I mentioned before, um, 
there is a seniority of claims. So uh, th in terms of bankruptcy, the creditors uh, are paid first. So after the liabilities are paid off, uh, what is left, our the residual value uh, is, uh, is the liquidation value of the uh, stock owners. Issuance value refers to the price at which the stocks are issued. Uh, and uh, market value of a stock, in fact, is the price that the stock is traded in the market. So it reflects the market. Uh, the price traded in the market reflects the market value of the stock. We can classify uh, stocks as uh, we can spe uh, we can classify stockholders as common stockholders, preferred stockholders. Uh, and so, what is the difference? A common stockholders take share from the profit of the company and participate in the liquidation surplus. So they are, in fact, the residual owners. The, their uh, right to liquidation comes after the creditors and the preferred stockholders, in fact. So preferred stockholders have a higher priority. They, they have priority on the profit and the company's assets in case of liquidation. So after the liabilities are paid off, preferred stockholders uh, receive their rights, and then the, uh, what is left uh, is uh, goes to the common stockholders. And another difference uh, is that preferred stockholders uh, are paid a fixed dividend. There is no fixed dividend in uh, in terms of common stockholders. And there could be some non-voting uh, stocks, stocks that ha that give the uh, owner no uh, no voting right. So how about the stock valuation? Uh, there are some uh, different models used to uh, to value to determine the value of stocks, and. Uh, one of the most important ones is the discounted dividend model, uh, which uses the discount, which uses a discount rate and future dividends or net cash flows of the company. So those dividends are uh, discounted to find uh, the present value. Uh, the price earnings ratio model uh, and market or market to book value model are also could could also be uh, used uh, to value uh, stocks. So taking those ratios as a benchmark, we can determine, uh, we can make an estimate of the stock value. If the, uh, if the price earnings ratio of a company is uh, high, it may mean that the stock is overvalued. And uh, on, uh, on the contrary, if it's low, if the price earnings ratio is low, uh, we can say that the stock is undervalued. Uh, the market to book value uh, has a, a similar logic. It also gives us an indication about the overvaluation or undervaluation uh, of a stock. We can also utilize regression models uh, to value stocks. Uh, in these models, the stock price is taken as the dependent variable, and some factors are used as independent variables to estimate uh, the, the stock price. Those uh, Factors which may influence, uh, which may be associated with the stock price, uh, include the interest rates in the markets, the exchange rates, uh, gold, and money supply. So there are some various independent variables, and those are used to uh, estimate uh, the stock price by running regressions. I'm sure you have uh, also uh, heard uh, the term stock indices. Uh, stock indices, in fact, give information to the investors about the structure and future behavior of the stock market and allow the market trend to be compared with past trends and other markets. So uh, looking at the trends of stock indi indices, we can, uh, we can observe if they are, uh, if the prices are uh, increasing or decreasing or uh, how markets compared to each other. So investors use these indices as a benchmark in evaluating the performance of their portfolios. Uh, investing in index-based securities reduces the risk of the investor undertakes since they are well di diversified. So it's some inexperienced uh, investors may prefer to invest in uh, index-based sec index securities, which mimic uh, the uh, the movements of uh, specific stock indices. So how about functions of stock markets? Uh, what are the benefits what, that they offer to the investors? Companies issue stocks uh, in uh, stock markets to, to raise capital 
Uh, in fact, their uh, companies raise capital in uh, primary markets uh, when they go public. Uh, they may raise capital and they may use these funds uh, to make profitable investments. Stock markets uh, also provide a platform uh, of price formation. So uh, the, uh, the stock prices are formed in stock markets. Investors can trade in secondary markets and obtain capital gain. They, uh, so investors may uh, buy and uh, sell uh, stocks in secondary markets. And if uh, they have some price uh, appreciation, they, they can have some capital gain. Uh, and depending on uh, market prices, they can uh, also bear some capital loss. Stock markets serve as uh, indicators of the overall economy. So they, they in, in a way, reflect the uh, the overall uh, the economic conditions. So if the economic conditions are improving, uh, these are the, this is reflected in the stock markets usually. And also changes in the stock markets give signals to the economic units. So so it gives us uh, an idea about the future uh, economic movements about the expectations of investors. Um, volatility, as you, you may remember, um, is about is a, about the, is a measure of risk. In fact, uh, volatility is a statistical measure of variability in price or return. Uh, as you remember, we uh, volatility can be defined as the standard deviation of returns. So it reflects the risk of the instrument or the market. Volatility can be co can be caused by many factors like uh, new public information, changes in the investor behavior, and economic uh, various economic and political uh, developments. Sometimes volatility spills over; it spreads to other markets through some economic channels. So that was a quick summary of the chapter with respect to stock markets.